Hi there, welcome to another Lemon Amiga Play Guide and Review. This time we're checking out Hannibal, developed and published by Starbyte Software and released in 1992. On the title screen you can see a very nice image and some music as well, and a trail of what like elephants in the background. We can either start a new game or load an old game, so let's begin a new game at this point and check out this game. And so for this one, let's stretch the image to full screen and then we can see what's going on. It's the 1st of June, 218 BC. You see at the bottom, a bar, and that's the ready bar. You have to press the ready bar every time you want to make a choice in the game and that will reveal the army condition of the three armies that we were given at the beginning of the game. This button over here is the move icon, this one is the buy icon and then we also have split and then fight at the end and it's important to memorize those because it isn't obvious from what they are. And at the beginning of the game, we can also go into the Carthago Empire Management System and from here we can give more money into the economy and all we need to do is to increase that a little bit at this stage because we don't really want to be spending all our cash on building up the economy. What we really want to do is to pile it all into the army. So let's have 102 talents in there of the thousands, well 2,000 talents that we have at the beginning of the game. You can see that we can change the tax rate for all of the places in the entire game. The tax rate and different land values and different places will all have different tax rates but at the beginning the standard amount is 5%. So let's leave it on 5% and that's how I like to leave it at the beginning of the game and throughout the game. Let's press the ready bar again and you can see in the map area we have some tags and those tags, the green ones are ours. By pressing the map button we can then highlight the arrows in the map and we can use those to move around the map. We can also zoom in and zoom out on the map as well. So by zooming in, you can see that that gives us a lot more detail. In this case, the Roman army is very strong. And you can see that it has 85,000 troops, 6,000 horses, and no elephants. By clicking on the big map button, we can see the big map. And that's the central dot in the middle of the arrows. And that will help us a bit later on. But for now, we're interested in Carthage. This place is in Africa, and we have a small army of 5,320 in the town army, and there are some remaining as well to be trained up. We have plenty of food, some soldiers there, 4,845 soldiers in the regiment, and the town cash is plenty at the moment. It's a port, so we can sail to places. There's no mining going on. There's a few horses. There are tons of elephants. And there are four road connections to it. Carthago 3 is the legion that we have in our forces at the moment. And that's a combined legion. That's 20,300 strong. And it's got food supply for 10 days. It's really important to make a note of food supplies. Even at this stage in the game. So let's take a look at Carthago. By clicking on the coin. And then clicking on the town. We can then buy and trade items including horses, elephants and ships and food and if we have any soldiers in the garrison we can also put those into our main army which is now 25 having bought lots of horses and lots of elephants and press gang people into the army. You can see the town army has 5,000 in it and that isn't going to change at this point. After every manoeuvre, it will tell us on the screen what we've just done. In this case, we've just bought some more elephants, some more horses, and increased the size of our army. You can see this button is the split button, and that is very useful because we can then split the legion in somewhere else. Just click on the legion and then click anywhere else to divide the legion and place it somewhere else. And so 
Let's click on number 4 as the next allotted slot and we can then divide the army, soldiers, horses and elephants into two armies. We can also fine tune that as well. And for this one at the beginning of the game I like to send a small skirmish party out and that should hopefully collect a lot of the encircling troops and the elephants and the horses that we can find in the villages nearby. It will then tell us of course that we've just done that. Clicking on the ready bar means we're ready for another action and Carthago that means that they're both in Carthage. So Legion 4, let's check it out. It's a small legion, it's got 3,000 troops in there. So let's just give them a bit of food. And now we can move that legion by clicking on the move icon. Let's move that to another location round about in our vicinity. Let's click on the map and zoom in on Carthage itself. And this is the only slow part, even though I'm playing this on an all 30. You can see some of the places nearby, all the major towns and cities, have soldiers in there. They also have horses and sometimes elephants as well. And combining those horses and those elephants and sending them back to Carthage is surely a good thing to do. So let's send out a small party and let's go to the next place which is Tunis. And Tunis is the next one along. It's got 567 soldiers in there. And uh, we'll definitely need those and send those back to Carthage itself. So let's now move our newly made 4th Legion, which is currently in Carthago, which is Carthage. Let's move that and that will bring up another map. And now we can see in a little more detail all of the locations and all the destinations that we can get to from this place. And Utica is the next one along and also Tunis, but we can also sail to different places as well if we have any boats. And you can see over the connection we don't have any boats, so we can't sail to any of these places. And you definitely need to sail to places a bit later on in the game. For now, we can go to our local places. The next one along is, well, Utica is right there and Utica has lots of forces that we can use so let's set off towards Utica at this point. Nothing will happen until we advance a day so at this point we can make lots of other plans and maneuver our army. And so we have some on the Iberian Peninsula. This is Taraco and this is Hannibal's army. He has 15,000 in there and also we have Carthago Nova. This is our first legion and this has 92,000 in there, which is incredible. So you can see that number four is moving. Let's have a look at Carthago Nova and we can also split Carthago Nova at this point into another small skirmish party that's gonna run around the field and we can either split that up and divide that up or we can just put a thousand in there as one of the smallest and give them a few horses as well so that they can carry things like food and they will slow down the regiment. Checking out the army we will need to give them some food before they move anywhere and that's a very important tip in the game. Moving the squad we can move now to Basti which is the next one along and we're going to send a few units out along the coast and hopefully collect some things because not that we'll know it but in the future the Romans are about to attack. So let's split off and make another skirmish party. Let's make it 3,000, give them a few horses at this point, as we have lots and lots of horses. And it really would be wise at this point to divide our army into two camps. And that means that we could send a huge army up to Hannibal, where he's going to need it. So let's give him almost half of our troops and let's see maybe half of our horses as well at least 3,000 horses is going to be required and maybe even a few elephants I have to give him well yeah let's give him all of the elephants apart from one so let's save one elephant for us and let's send all the rest up to Hannibal 
and before we do anything, let's just buy them some food, and make sure that they've got more than enough days to travel in case we find any enemy territory and we don't get food in enemy territory. Let's now click on a few of the things nearby, Elysi and Lucentum, and those are friendly, neutral and free and friendly to Carthage, which is great, and Valencia there is also free and neutral. And Saguntum is actually a Carthage colony, because if you remember from the history, we attacked Saguntum first of all, and that's what sparked off the Second Punic War, which we're just about to enter at the moment. So these Saguntum colonies were what sparked off the whole thing, and Hannibal has moved north, and we're basically taking over the story from where we left off. So, let's check out Hannibal, there's not much in Taraco, although there's plenty of food in there. So we're going to have to collect all the soldiers, look at that town army and soldiers waiting to be picked up. We're going to have to move up there, and by the time we get to Hannibal, let's hope the Romans haven't attacked. Let's use the move icon, click on Carthago Nova, they've got the food. So let's set them off onto the next part of the journey. They don't have any ships at this point, but we could sail across the ocean. But let's move to the next place and see what happens. Don't forget, this is still on the first day. This is still the 1st of June 218 BC. Let's move again to the big map. And we've managed to carve up two of our forces. And you can see quite a few of them are moving. And the one at Carthago Nova is there to stand guard because the Romans will attack Carthago Nova, so let's give them plenty of food at this point so that they can withstand a huge siege. And so you can see by clicking on the coin icon and then clicking on our legion, we can give them the food that they need. And if there's any waiting soldiers being trained up, we can also throw them directly into the army. Got 17,000 at the moment, and that's definitely going to need to be increased if we're going to stand a chance against the Romans, who have 30 or 40,000 strong army. So let's check out the map again, and you can see our second army has now got 17,000 in there, thanks to putting the soldiers in there who are waiting. And now we have three units, three major armies on the battlefield, and lots of smaller ones as well. Let's split up Carthago, and let's give them uh, another small army. A small army doesn't require that much food, and so a small army can move sometimes a lot quicker than a large army and the game will even tell us the speed of our troops when we click on them we can see how fast they will go so let's give yet another skirmish party yet more food and let's send that off from Carthago let's send that inland but before we can go inland we'll have to get to Tunis because that's the nearest point and that's the crossroads that we need to get to so we've now divided and ruled all of our area and there are quite some manoeuvring now apart from the top three and the home armies I like to keep them home guarding because the Romans are about to split up their army and send them off according to history towards Sicily where they will then amalgamate this 10,000 strong bonus legion into one huge one and the Scipio brothers will then sail north over Corsica and attack northern Spain. So we need to be ready for that. We need to have the army. We need to have the troops available. And you can see the town army is only 5,000. That isn't really going to stand up to the Romans at any point. So we're going to have to run like heck and gather up all of our forces and hope that we can get them before the Romans attack. And so... We've got some income, it's still the 1st of June, and we can see in that date the army has moved, and you can see where it's moved to, and you can see the Roman army has also moved and split up their troops, and Roman army 2 takes 34,000 soldiers. So we can see our first group has arrived in Tunis, it's arrived 
virtually on the first day, so let's collect the horses from there, let's collect the elephants from there, and sometimes the food as well. Let's demolish the whole army because really, if anything's attacking this place, it's not going to survive anyway, so let's take those, let's ravage the food supply, and let's move on to the next place. It's nice to see a graphic representation of the road and we do get some graphics in this game but mostly it's a map plotter and that's why I've made this game full screen but you can see in full screen 69 like this you can see plenty of it. And so the Roman army takes even more soldiers and more horses, but they don't have any elephants because they're not based in Africa. And they set off towards Ostia and they have 25 days of food available. And setting off towards Ostia is not a good sign at this point. We've arrived at Utica and Utica is a tyrant. It's a thorn in our backside and it's likely to be somewhere that the Romans will attack. It's got 3,000 soldiers in there and 24 horses. So let's click on the coin, click on Utica, and of course let's liberate all of the town army and roll that into ours. And then let's liberate all the soldiers that are waiting and all the elephants and well we've run out of money it seems and that can happen really soon in the game really quickly we've spent all of our cash already on forces so yes we need to click on the helmet again go back to the coffers go back to the forum and give our army some more funds i like to give that at least a hundred or maybe even two hundred talents at the time but not more than that because we really don't want to be running out of money at this stage Let's go back to Utica, let's buy the rest of those elephants and that means that we've cleaned that place out, they've got enough food to survive so all we need to do is to move on to the next place along the coast and from Utica we can get to only two places, we can go back to Carthago or we can go to another coastal town which doesn't necessarily have a port in this game and there are only a few ports on a few towns and that means you can't sail to everywhere you can only sail to a few places you can see Roman Army 1 has split into 31,000 it's on its way panic is now spreading through Carthage and we are really getting in terrible panic now everybody's ready to attack us and the ordinary army in Rome will stay at around 20,000 troops and the rest will come and attack Spain and Carthage. We better get ready, it all happens quickly, we're on the 2nd of June, time's ticking away, and so Hannibal would be wise to go into Gaul at this point, but Gaul is unfriendly to us and it will take a long hard slog to get there and a lot more forces than he has at the moment. We're going to have to save our strength for the Roman attacks. That's the most important point. And so we can plot our way around the map. That's very important that we can click on any town and city and the big cities will be highlighted in red. You can see Paphos is there on the island and we also have Beritus, which is a huge port and from Beritus we can sail across and this is our motherland, of course. This is where the Phoenicians all started all those years ago in Tyrus. This is a Roman map, so all the place names will be in Roman, so that's why they call it Tyrus. And we can also click on the populated map, and that will bring up a special map. That tells us all of the places that we currently occupy this in light green is our home army and you can see in dark red that's the romans occupied territory the blue comes from old greek colonies and the light green are places that are friendly to us the dark green are the places that we've taken over and there are new colonies 
and you can see a unified Rome, and you can see that we still have some islands dotted around Mare Nostrum, the Mediterranean, and a few outposts as well. And that's what remains of the old Phoenician Empire, and instead of trading with Tyre, we're now exclusively trading with Iberia, and Ibiza, and all those small islands, and Malta. You can see we haven't taken over too much land at this point, but the rest in grey are all free and neutral, and we're going to have to raid all those free and neutral places by as much as we can, even though we cannot take their town army. You can see free and neutral places are everywhere, and so we're going to have to get in there buy as much as we can using our funding and then when we take over those lands later on we can then take on those town armies and send them against Rome which is directly across from Carthage which is just over the water you can see a breakdown of everything that we've got including the Romans and the Carthaginians they own 67 lands we only own 28 you can see we have lots of mining going on and the Romans don't have much at this point and you can see our combined soldiers we have more and the combined cash we now have less we now have 1900 talents and the Romans have 2700 talents we cannot unfortunately sail to those islands at this point we can only sail to them a little bit later on once we get boats and it's important to study the map and think ahead because if we don't think ahead the town that we are currently in could run out of food and we're gonna have to move out of that town and being in a stronghold may seem a great idea but if there are places nearby that have troops surely it would be wise to set off and gather those troops you can see on the east coast of Spain, lots of troops that we need to get. But we also have our army moving up from Carthago Nova. So at this point, I'm undecided about what to do. We can also head off towards Narbo. And Narbo Mortius is the harbour town. And Narbo is actually a country that we can attack. They're a colony of Greece. And they have quite a few soldiers available for us to collect. The entire valley is also rich, so we'll have to make our way up there, but not at this point. At this point, we're gonna have to consolidate our forces. So you can see what all of the three map buttons do, and this button here is strange, and we'll move on to that one a little bit later on and it's the 2nd of June and we can't operate that button at this time we can also turn the sound on and off, not that there is much of it we can also load and save a game and we can also quit the game back to workbench so let's load a game at this point let's load up save game 1 and let's see how far we got with it and let's venture on into this game a little bit further you can see at this time point it's only the 11th of June and lots of things are already kicking off the Romans have split up their army, and this is a direct play of the one that you saw before, so this is a continuum. You can see the Romans are on their way with 34,000 troops, that is not a good thing. We've got 19,000 moving their way up the coast, and that will collect troops as it goes, and the home army is usually around 20,000 troops, that doesn't usually vary throughout this game. We've got one of the Scipios also heading towards us as well, and it's not going to be long before that scoops up its friendlies in Sicily, even though we've got a couple of friendlies in Sicily at this point, we can't really do much about it. All we can do is concentrate on our collection parties, and you may notice that they get steadily stronger or steadily weaker depending on the roads that they've had to travel and the heat of the day. This is June, so this is summer, and sometimes in Africa it gets too hot, and some of our forces will leave, depart, and even die due to the heat. You can see now we're collecting forces. 
And so you can see a little bit further on down the line, it's now the 28th of June, and you can see all of our forces have moved. Some have reached the coast of Gediz, and from there they can pick up lots of troops. But the Romans are on our doorstep, and so we'll have to wait until one of those attacks. One of those is heading towards Taraco, which according to history they did, and when they missed Hannibal, they took Taraco instead. In this case, I'm going to leave Hannibal there instead, and this party, which was number seven that were created, now has all of the army in the world. So let's move that towards Hannibal. Let's then mingle those and mix those armies together. The other important thing before all that happens is the Romans are about to attack Carthage. That definitely takes priority over everything else, and Romans attacking Carthage is something that you'll have to get used to in this game. It doesn't happen so often, but it does happen within the first month, and so we'll be attacked again a little bit later on. 41,000 troops will have to be avoided, and at this point we're gathering armies and gathering people all towards Carthage, and at this point we've run out, we're definitely redirecting them back towards Carthage as quickly as possible. And one of our armies has reached Numidia, and the one to the far right of the map is Numidia. They're kind of friendly towards us, and they will give us some help, but at this stage really just need to be heading back home as quickly as possible. And we've managed to get some of the units back home and so let's merge those back into the Carthaginian army and that means army number 10 that we created will be merged into army number 3 and that will then disappear off our army list as soon as that merge has taken place. To do that you have to press the ready bar and so we've got the one at Cadiz and we've got one at Serta as well. Serta and Cadiz will have to be moved back, in this case, to an appropriate position. Let's check out Gideas and let's see where they can move to. We can move inland and take all of this space. So we can also sail from here as well, but again, we don't have any boats, unfortunately. That can save a lot of time and that can save our army as well. So let's buy something in Gideas. Let's buy the most important point, and that is the army and the food and let's take some out of the town army as well let's get some more and at this point we can build up a very nice legion from the dregs of what we have remaining in this corner of Spain that's definitely enough as long as they have at least 300 food that's fine for now and if it's big army, it will require more food than that. Let's check out Serta. That's in Numidia. And from here, we can move further inland, but I really should be moving back to Russicade and moving back to Carthage itself. So while we're at Serta, let's again remember to stock up on food because we don't have any. We've got eight food available and eight food available isn't really going to last very long against the Romans. So you can see, again, we can take care of all of the resources in that particular vicinity. And if we forget to give them some food, just like this, and move them onto the next vicinity, with only eight satchels of grain, they're not going to make it. So... What we're going to have to do is, if we realise, we're going to have to turn that army back. And turning an army back is possible in this game. The Romans are approaching. We've got 40,000 troops and they've got 41,000 troops. So it's going to be a close call. And if I'm guiding my legions and my skirmish units all the way back, then hopefully they can just about collect enough in time to defeat the Romans. At this point, it could go either way. 
By clicking on the arrow under the hourglass, we can now move ahead in time, and that advances one whole day. We can get to see where our units have moved to, and also where the Romans have moved to as well. We've managed to realise that the one going to Rusicade is run out, so if we click on move, click on the army, we can tell them to wait, go forward or even go backwards, and because they are only just outside of the city, it's best to turn them back at this point, and that means that they've just about got enough food to go back to Serta, and that means that the army doesn't diminish. If you're out of food, the army is decimated, so you really do not want to do that at any point during the game. Roman Army 2 has moved, and they are right on our doorstep, and that's not a really good sign at this point. And we have enough in the north of Spain to take care of the Scipios, but we really do not have much of a hope unless we can guide the last of the units back. And look at that, they're right there. We cannot attack the Romans directly, but they can attack us directly, which is a quirk of the game. And so if we go on to the next day, that is just what will happen. And then the Roman army number one stands at the right wall of Florentia. And Carthaginian army five stands somewhere. And here we go, Roman army one is beginning the siege of Carthage. At that point, we will get a map screen showing us exactly where we are, although we can't do anything about it. And then we will get a herd of elephants. From here we can select either an offensive or a defensive manoeuvre, either an open battle or an ambush. And from here I've actually edited the game using a hex editor because this was all in German. We can either use the canny approach, which is an enclosure like an envelope, and that's what Hannibal used, that's his most famous manoeuvre, or we can have a full frontal attack, we can have a wedge formation, we can flank them left and right formation, we can lock our formation like the Romans, or a spread formation, and spread is great if the enemy has elephants, we can simply spread apart. But for this, let's choose the enclosure, and now all we can do is to see the Romans attacking us, and see our forces being slowly massacred. We can fly at any point, and that will mean that the siege continues, but the battle ends, and hopefully if we fly, it means that by the time the Romans attack again, we can hopefully have some more forces, but oh no, they've attacked again, and sometimes while we're waiting for our legions to get here, they can attack and attack and attack. So let's ambush them again, and let's this time try a flank formation, and that really doesn't hold us in much stead at this point, so let's run away and hope that we can get enough over to Carthago and let's get those friendlies on the move. Unfortunately, there is no music at any point in the game and the game will only beep at us if we do something wrong, so it's played in total silence. You see, loading it up from a later point, we're now the 24th of July. And because we managed to get all of our forces together by relying on loading up previous games until we got it right, here we are. We've defeated the Roman army, and that means that we can split our Carthago army off again. And let's send one north along the coast to collect more troops, and let's send one south along the coast to do the same job. And we even created another army in Carthago Nova. They've got a few boats and they've sailed across that channel. And we can now start linking armies together and combining forces together. At this point, we can see the occupancy map. And we've occupied a few more things, only a few in Spain and we're definitely going to occupy Numidia and Mauritania. The hardest thing is to think about where we need to go, and you can see 
in the north, we've already demolished the Roman army, which you might have noticed was on its way towards Hannibal, and there is yet another army sailing towards Hannibal at this point. So what I'm actually doing is going back to plan A and gathering forces, sending them back to Carthago Nova, and then sending those north to reinforce Hannibal. Clicking on the Roman army, they've sent another 15,000 towards us, and that's really not enough to get towards Hannibal, and they can resupply and rearm. We've got 38,000 left over from the various massacres. Moving forward to the 22nd of October, loading our saves, you can see that another Roman army has made it all the way through Taraco. Our army from Hannibal is waiting there, and all we can do to force that to attack the Romans is to head off in a line with where the Romans have encamped themselves. So what we're going to do is walk off towards Narbo, and having walked off, we will then collide with the Romans, and that will instigate the battle. It's always important whenever a friendly unit arrives home to combine those directly, and let's combine some more into Carthage, because that really needs to resupply after the battle, and that means that frees up a slot in our army campaign list. Let's look at the point at hand, and the point of hand is definitely the Romans. And here we are, Ilerbius the second, or whatever that's called. Let's move towards Rossino, and Rossino is the next place along heading towards Narbo, and maybe we'll bump into the Romans. A great point about this game is you definitely have to plan manoeuvres and attacks before you get into trouble, and at this point in history, well, at this point in October, Hannibal had definitely moved into Gaul, and we're changing history at this point to fight the Romans so that we can actually defend our land and not stretch our forces too far. We've arrived at Racino, so let's again go through the usual routine, which you can do blindfolded by now. We've got 2,000 food, so let's move those into Narbo, and again, let's hope that we collide with the Romans. I have to click the next day for that to happen, and yes, the siege has happened. We've hit a Roman brick wall. Now it's time to go through the same routine, and I always choose defensive and ambush, because I like to do that, and the canny manoeuvre, in most cases, is better if you have more units than the Romans. If you have less, then maybe a different formation is probably in order. At this stage, you cannot see anything manoeuvring on the battlefield. All you can do is watch the demise of one army or another. And at this stage, it's the Romans who are taking all the punishment. You can see all of the soldiers going down. They have no elephants because they are the Romans. And their horses are just about to bottom out. And we take no prisoners. Apparently, we'll have to wait until every single soldier has bitten the dust or legged it before we can declare the battle over. It's very nice pictures that we get in the game, and some of those are very nicely drawn, and they look even better on full screen. That's the battle won, and we've defeated the Romans. All the Romans have got now is, well, one party that's on the coast, the Scipios, are waiting in Massilia for us, and we've got another one, well, Scipio's waiting with 13,000, so he's definitely going to have to resupply. The one in Rome has got its usual 20,000, so that means that finally the Roman Empire is vulnerable, and we can now march our armies together, and we can start attacking different regions. At this point, I want to attack everything except the Romans, and we've managed to consolidate everything into Carthago, and most of it into Taraco. 
So at this point, the best thing to do is to set off into Gaul and North Africa and try to take as much land as humanly possible now because you can see yet again the Roman army is split near Rome and you don't know if that's going to attack Carthage, New Carthage or Taraco so at this point it's best to take as much as we can and you can see that we've managed to take Toletum that's friendly to Rome and that has a mine and mining is definitely important in this game because mining gives us some raw materials that we can buy and sell on the market gives us some more income which we can also tax so mining is definitely important and it's an iron mine and we're in siege at the moment so if we click on siege we'll have to stop it before we move on to somewhere else We're now on the 4th of September, you can see we've split up again and splitting up, divide and rule is definitely necessary, let's take a look at the strategic map which is one of my favourite maps in the game, you can see we've taken over quite a lot of Norbol but look at that, Iberia has sided with Rome and so all of this is now friendly to Rome and so we cannot take out any more forces unless we attack Iberia and force it to become our own colony which is what we've done in Mauritania and you can see northern Sicily has turned to Carthage and even southern Gaul and the Pyrenees and the Alps region has turned to Carthage so at this point the war has definitely swung in our way this is the 5th of November and we're changing history at this point to fight the Romans this is a prime manoeuvre and in history Hannibal was heading towards the Alps at this point and already over the Alps and so let's head that way into Gaul heading on towards February we can see that we can click the mysterious button and what that will do is upgrade some of the towns that we've managed to capture and upgrading the towns will cost us a fortune and it will also list out all of the towns and the fortune that we've spent on them that will make them a little bit happier and a little bit more improved like a civilization game and that fast forwards time to the 1st of April and if you remember we selected that button in February and so all of our troops will remain stationary if we choose that option and so at this point I don't like to use the option because that means our troops are vulnerable so you can see we've gone back to February, it's back to the 6th of February and instead of choosing to upgrade our cities instead we'll use all of those days to move our forces around and by the time we get to April we can see what difference that's made Moving on, you can see we're still trying to take the Iberian Peninsula and all we need to do is to take maybe 10 towns for the whole country to give up and because the people in Gaul are barbaric tribes that's not really going to affect much if we take much but you can see this area here is definitely not our friend and the Numidians will definitely side with Rome as quickly as they possibly can and that is true to real life as well thirteen thousand army that's all the Romans have got left that's absolutely terrific you can see Hannibal's army is now moving as quickly as possible collecting troops and attacking wherever possible and attacking places means that you have to lay siege to them but sometimes you can fall over friendly Carthaginian territory which is where we are at the moment by clicking on all these places we can plot our advance course towards all these places and sometimes it's worth doing that to figure out where we need to go Army 2 is Hannibal and they're stuck out in the middle of Gaul so we really need to plot a better route for them Here we are on the 25th of February 
and you can see we're still moving through goal with Hannibal trying to scoop up as much as possible. And Saguntum, let's begin the siege of Saguntum. You heard a beep there, that's one of the few beeps in the entire game. And clicking on the swords and clicking on the place will instantly begin a siege. You can then select that and then we're going to siege mode. We'll then have to wait a few days to see what happens and hope that our army isn't going around to food. We've sent another army up from Carthago Nova, that's almost at Taraco, and Taraco is almost out of food, so we can't really rely on Taraco as a base. Moving on through time, if we take Saguntum and all the places on the Bay Area, it means that the internals of Spain will eventually give up, and you can see Hannibal has begun to take a few places in Gaul, and a few places are ours on the coast, a few places are friendly as well. A few places will turn to roam and defect. And defecting is definitely something to watch out for, especially if you leave towns completely empty of food, they will defect. And so one thing to make sure is number one, our army has food, but number two, the place has food, otherwise they will defect. Just like that, and they'll have to go all the way back and turn them back to Carthage. Unless you're going to do what I'm going to do and just leave those there because sometimes a siege can take a long time, it can take a day or a month or several months and you can't really afford to siege several months in this game because you have to break up the siege, go somewhere else, get some more food, come back, start the siege again and it can be a waste of time. All you can do is to gather forces together into a super army, which is what I'm doing at the moment, and gathering forces into a super army is the best thing, because it means sieges won't last as long, and battles are more or less guaranteed if you have the upper hand. It's the 15th of April, and we didn't select to upgrade our cities, so we've gathered all our forces together, and you can see in northern Iberia now, we're now moving those again towards Hannibal, who has a huge combined army. We're back up to 20,000 at home, which is pathetic, so we're really going to have to concentrate on our home base, just to make sure that that survives. And you can see that we're taking some places out in the peninsula, it's friendly to Rome, and if we attack some places and besiege some places, it can really bog us down. And you can see Berense, which is now known as Benghazi, which is definitely a place you don't want to get bogged down in, in the Phoenician, the, in the Punic War, or even the Second World War. And in this case, I sieged Benghazi for about a month, ran out of food, the army got decimated, and I had to leave the place alone. So what I did at this point is to reload from a save point, and from a save point before I besieged Benghazi, Berenci, and at this point all the land is now clear. With the land now friendly, it was possible to ignore that region completely and leave that as a free zone. And if you leave that as a free zone, it means that all of that area should be friendly to move around in the future. We've got 40,000 now in Hannibal's army, that's definitely a major force. 17,000 from his brother Hasdrubal, he's backing him up and he'll go behind Hannibal. And army 10 has got another 10,000 in there. And it's all looking good for our army at this point. You can see, having reloaded from the save, this area is now friendly to us, or at least it's friendly in general. And it's always fantastic to look at the big map and to compare our forces. We've also linked up now several places in Gaul, so that means we can now concentrate on attacking Rome whilst they are weak and if we look at the weak Roman army that's managed to survive into deep into enemy territory but if we click on that army you can see it only has 1796 troops remaining they're basically spent because they've besieged the city for about five months the city has not fallen 
In the meantime, we've managed to get several boats, and one of those boats has arrived in Alexandria, and Alexandria is a fantastic place to visit. It's a major city, it has a huge town army, it has lots of things to sell, and you can see that we can sail from here all the way across the other side to Asia Minor. We can also sail across to Tyre, and we can sail across to Rhodes as well. So at this point, let's consolidate, and let's try to get all of these forces together. And at this point, the ones that were left over on that peninsula, I've given up trying to move them towards Alexandra, and I'm now actually moving them on foot all the way back to Carthage, and that 10,000 army will eventually get to Carthage. And so that's what we have to do, move them the slow way, because boats in this game are massively expensive. And yes, we've managed to sail to Alexandria, and we have... 57 boats, but they were massively expensive to buy. We cannot decimate the town army, but we can take those 5,000 soldiers. We can buy horses as well, and we can buy food. And because we've bought a huge army, and some more food, and some more horses, it means we no longer have enough boats to get to our destination. Alexandria is fantastic and we can sail all the way across back to Apollonia, back to Syracuse, back to Rhodes and this case I'm going to choose Tyrus because Tyrus is a great place to visit, it has lots of things to pick up but we need 83 ships unfortunately to get to Tyrus, that means we'll need to spend more money in Alexandria, luckily they have lots of ships Unfortunately for us, our coffers are empty again. That means we'll have to go back to the tribute and tribute ourselves even more of our hard-earned cash. 2,000 talents and then back to Alexandria, spend some more money, buy the ships. Slightly more than what we need. And now we can select move, hopefully, having clicked on the ready button, and the map, we can then move the map, see where we are. So the interface in this game is slightly unwieldy, and sometimes it can be a little bit slow to update as well, definitely if, if you have an Amiga 500. And you can see, oh, a picture of a trireme there. Carthaginian Army 6 takes to the water and heads towards Tyre. That's fantastic. Whilst we're sailing, we won't lose any troops due to hard territory because we're not moving through any hard territory. And we are attacked on the water by pirates. We can lose troops by pirates. And sometimes that's definitely a drawback, but we won't lose too many troops through piracy at this stage. When we are ready, we can also click on the rectangle at the bottom right corner and that will advance days. And that's also helpful to advance the number of days in the game. You can see the Roman army hasn't moved very far, they're basically sticking to history. And Scipio is waiting in Massilia, which he hopes will cut us off from entering Rome. And we can see Russicade, yes we can type place names into the big map. And that will show us exactly where they are. And you can see Rusicade there is a place quite near Carthage. But that's definitely not a place where we need to get to on this particular place through. You can see on the other side of the map we've made it through to Tyre and we're heading towards Cyprus. Army 5 have been caught out by a sea storm, and that's definitely another thing to watch out for. And in boats, you can open up a whole new area of the game as you're being attacked by the weather and by piracy. We can see we're now heading towards Crete, and heading towards Crete, we can only make it through that one port on the very edge of Cyprus. A bit later on, it's the 14th of July, and we've made it to Attilia. And Attilia is a great strategic strongpoint. You can see it's around the corner from Ephesus. 
and there it's a huge town army same again with roads they have a huge town army as well but if we choose to siege this place which we are doing at the moment we can run out of food and run out of food at this stage of the game is definitely something to watch out for because these outlying territories don't have much so i'm going to click on battle i'm going to stop the siege and I'm going to instead move off to the next place down the line, which is known as Purge. And Purge is only a small place, but it's definitely an easier place to take on and besiege. But, once you've besieged a town, it can run out of food. So if you besiege three towns in a row, and they all run out of food, it means that you've got precious little food remaining. So at this point, I'm going to have to go back to Cyprus because the food that I took over to Crete, to attack Crete with, will run out by the time I've besieged the city. You can see I'm besieging Knossos and the town army is only 1200 in there so it shouldn't be too bad against 4700 army but unfortunately our food supplies run out with no food left, with no food left to sail anywhere else None of this place is friendly to us. If we stay and keep up the siege, all of our army will desert and die. And if we move anywhere else, it's not guaranteed that we'll find food after we've liberated another town. So it's a catch-22 situation. In this case, I moved off to another town and didn't take it. So what I chose to do instead was load up another save point from before I decided to attack Crete. And I didn't bother to attack it after all. And loading up previous saves is a godsend in this game because it means you can wipe out huge mistakes. And huge mistakes are definitely possible because you can see places are now defecting behind us and Macedonia is defecting behind us and everything else is defecting away. So we're really going to have to be on our toes if we want to capture the Romans. And I thought it would be great to march through Macedonia take them that way as well as the north and the west. It doesn't look like that plan is going to come to fruition. Still 33,000 troops, it's going to take a few more rolls of the dice and we'll see. So Hannibal is a slow plodding game that absorbs hours and you can definitely absorb hours into this. Hours and hours I've played this for weeks and weeks now and this is virtually as far as I've ever got with it and the code was created by Andre or Andreas Seabrook and he coded Tiberic for Ocean and that was released in 1991 and he also went on to Space Max for Starbite in 1992 and the graphics that you can see as we see that our army had run out of food and they were deserting us the graphics were created by Ingo Mesh, who worked on lots of promotional games for Starbite, and including the telecom games and things like that. The game originally came on four discs, but thank god it's hard drive installable, and this definitely is worth playing on WHD load, and on full screen, and even in full screen stretch mode so that you can see more of the map. I'm now bringing back my 10,000 strong from Benghazi, it's now up to 12,000 and so maybe we can be up to 15 by the time we reach Carthage and then we can send some boats across hopefully to take over Syracuse and some other places and it's great to hem in the enemy but this game begins really difficult, there are no difficulty levels in the game all you can have is more army than the enemy's army and that means that this game starts off with a steep learning curve which some players will find annoying this definitely isn't June 2, it's definitely a plodding game where you have to go through the routines of going through town to town collecting everything from it, taking the food, moving to the next town all while juggling balls and juggling maybe up to 10 armies at any one time I like to leave my skirmish armies outside of the normal armies and I like to leave a force behind. Purge has now succeeded in giving up 
unfortunately we don't have a food supply left and so our food is definitely running out. Now that we've conquested Purge, we can either take over the town, plunder it completely, or decimate the town and sack it, and set the whole thing on fire. Let's take over the town, and that means that that will become a Carthaginian colony. We have soldiers available from the Carthaginian colony, and we shall supply our own soldiers into that base. So the first thing we need to do is to get into Purge, take out our own soldiers, and take out all of the food as well. And Purge will definitely rebel because it doesn't have any food in there. But we're going to need all the food. And food, as surprising as it may seem, is one of the more important things in the game. So we have 116 food in our precious army. And we could leave that behind. But to be honest, that's only enough for enough days to walk through to the next friendly territory. So, again, this is as far as I've got in this game. It's all boiling over. The Romans have been defeated. And at this stage, we're definitely cheating history by attacking three places and trying to have a three-pronged fork attack to trident the Romans in the ass. So that's what we're doing. We're moving through these territories and we're trying to attack. But unfortunately, because we've sieged ourselves out of food, We've only got four days supply of food left to get all the way to Cilicia, which is friendly, and it has the food. So, rather than fighting in this game, sometimes it's a game of plotting, and it's a game of trying not to get yourself killed. Again, you can lose forces just by walking along the land, you can lose forces in winter when it's winter, and in summer when it's boiling hot, particularly in Africa, and definitely you'll have to watch out for the seasons in this game. I quite like this game, in fact I love the game, it's got lots of character, it's played almost in silence, you can play all your favourite mods with it, and I think even though it's slow and plodding like a Risk game, it's got bags of things going for it, and I'm not sure how close to history it is, but it definitely keeps you on your toes, definitely at the beginning when you have to defeat army after army after army. And so only one magazine defined this with a review, that was Amiga Joker, who defied every single confirmation by giving this 78%, it definitely went against Amiga Joker's usual scoring format. And Lemon Amiga awarded this game 77%, which awards this game an average score of 7.5 out of 10. Meanwhile, I'm still stuck on Crete, and I'm still stuck losing troops left, right and center, besieging troops and losing them through lack of food, and I'm stuck here with Hannibal because... I'm really waiting for my extra army to appear so I can move those and drag them together. So this is basically the second Punic War and this is your chance to defeat all of Rome decisively and to turn against history. I find this game is massively fun to check out the cities and check out the cities in real life and maybe even use Google Earth and Street View to walk around a few of these cities. And I've checked out lots of ancient ruins thanks to playing this game, and checked out lots of places and names that I thought were familiar. So it's a history test, and it's fun to check out all of the names from the Bible, and the books that you've read, and the Iliad, and the Trojan Wars, and all of the things from antiquity. And it's fun to set nation against nation and to change history and to research that and to be an Indiana Jones. It's not fun at all when different places side against us and go with the Romans. And it's not fun when you're just waiting to attack and you know that in any moment the Romans could decide to launch another force against us. So thank you for viewing this play guide and review.